Introduction I am feeling very thirsty. Do you have water in your water bottle? Yeah, take it. Ah, now I am feeling fine. Today there is no air around. You are right. Today is very humid. It is reported in the morning news that today's weather will be humid and it may rain. Children, in this lesson we will learn about air, water and weather. Objectives At the end of this lesson you will be able to Tell the importance of air and water. Explain the composition of atmosphere. Describe water cycle. Define weather and explain various factors on which it depends. Differentiate between weather and climate. Air is very important for almost all life on earth, including plants and animals. Plants need carbon dioxide from air to do photosynthesis and releases oxygen into the air. Human beings and animals need to breathe air to get the oxygen they need to survive. Do you know the atmosphere surrounding Earth is full of air? Hmm, but what is this atmosphere? Come along to know. The atmosphere is made up of mixture of gases, primarily nitrogen and oxygen that wrap around the earth like a blanket. Without the atmosphere, we would not be able to live here. It protects us from the dangerous rays coming from the sun and make earth as a perfect habitat for plants and animals. We know air is very essential for our life, but did you ever wonder why water was so important? Yes. We need water to drink, to bath, to cook, to wash our clothes, to water plants and for so many other reasons. It is true that without water, the plants would die and people and animals would go thirsty. So children, save every drop of water and don't let it go waste. Water is the most abundant substance present on the earth. In fact, our earth's 70% surface area is covered with water. Do you know earth is also called as a blue planet because when seen from the space it appears blue due to water. Water exists in three states. Solid, liquid and gaseous. Ice, snow, and frost are examples of water in the solid state. You see liquid water in rivers, lakes, ponds, sea, when it rains and the water coming out of a tap. Water vapor is a gas in the air. You can't see gas because it is invisible. You will be surprised to know that water makes up two-thirds of the human body. It plays a critical role in regulating body temperature, carries nutrients throughout the body, improves digestion and eliminates waste from the body. Have you ever wondered where does all the water in rain come from? Well, there is always a certain amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. It comes from the earth's surface water like oceans, rivers and lakes. The heat of the sun heats up the water from the surface of these reservoirs and changes water from the liquid state to the gaseous state. This is called evaporation. High up in the atmosphere, water vapors cool down and form clouds. This is called condensation. When the water molecules in clouds begin to collect, they form bigger droplets and fall down as a rain, snow or hail, depending upon the temperature. This is called precipitation. Finally, the water reaches the water bodies and gets collected there. Well, you can see water is constantly cycling from land to air and back to land again. 
This process is known as the water cycle. Therefore, kids, water on our earth will never come to an end. Hey, did you check today's weather forecast? No? Hmm. What is this weather? Basically, weather is a condition of an atmosphere at a certain place and time. Well, the weather depends on many factors such as temperature, humidity and air pressure. Come, let us learn about these factors. Probably we all know that temperature is a measure of how hot or cold the air is. It depends upon the energy it receives from the sun. Temperature is measured with the help of a device called thermometer and it is calculated in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Another important factor influencing weather is humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air. Yes, the air around us is full of water. You can usually see the water evaporates from lakes, oceans, rivers and even from the trees. When the humidity increases, we sweat a lot and feel sticky and uncomfortable. When the humidity in the air reaches nearly 100%, the air can't hold too much vapors and if the temperature falls at that place, water vapors return to its original liquid state. As the condensation happens close to the ground, mist and fog is produced. And very high up in the atmosphere, clouds are formed. Eventually, water from the clouds return back to the earth in the form of rain, snow or hay. What next? Yes, air pressure. You might not realize, but the air around you actually has a weight. We measure air pressure with the device called the barometer. In areas of high pressure, the air slowly descends to the earth's surface. High pressure areas are associated with clear sunny days. In areas of low pressure, air rises up into the atmosphere. Low pressure areas have high humidity, clouds, rain, and other kind of precipitation. Is weather and climate the same? No. Areas long-term weather patterns determines climate. For example, areas near the equator have warm climate and the areas near the poles have much colder climate. So children, now you can easily differentiate weather from climate. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Human beings and animals need to breathe air to get the oxygen they need to survive. The atmosphere is made up of mixture of gases, primarily nitrogen and oxygen, that wrap around the earth like a blanket. We should save every drop of water and don't let it go waste. Water plays a critical role in regulating body temperature, carries nutrients throughout the body, improves digestion, and eliminates waste from the body. The process of constant cycling of water from land to air and back to land again is called water cycle. Weather is a condition of an atmosphere at a certain place and time. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air. Areas long-term weather patterns determines the climate.